Thanks for joining us again on Celebrating Act Two. As you can see, Art Kirsch and I are with the lovely Dr. Liz Lister. Hi, Dr. Liz. Good to see you again. Hi, likewise. Thanks for being here with me. Hi, Dr. Liz. I have a question for you. Um, I watch a lot of late night TV, and I notice that the ads for the diseases and the maladies of people change. Although right now, a lot of primetime stuff is, I wouldn't want my, uh, my grandkids uh, to see a lot of that stuff. To point, <laughs> well, what is that disease? What exactly is a bent carrot? You know, that kind of stuff. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I've noticed that um, there seems to be an increasing number of advertisements um, for, besides rashes and things like that, uh, directed towards women about um, vaginal lubrication and and uh, taking care of issues that deal with, I guess, pain with sex in one form or another. Is that a, a really real thing that's widespread? Um, can you enlighten us as to, are, are we just becoming more aware of it now? I think we're becoming more open about talking about these issues. It's definitely extremely common. Over their lifetimes, three out of four women will report some type of pain or discomfort with sex. So just because it's common doesn't mean that it's normal and that women just have to accept it. Right? We're, that's what we're here for. Uh, to educate people so they can advocate for themselves and, and get the treatments and help that they need. So lubricants are great. Uh, however, they don't always accomplish the full uh, con correction of what's going on. So as women get older, their bodies, uh, we've talked about this many times, the hormone levels decline. And not only does this affect how we feel overall, but it affects the blood supply to the lining of the vaginal tissue, the vagina and the base of the bladder. So all these tissues that are involved in this type of intercourse sex for women can really be affected. They can have pain, so the, they can have the dryness, which the lubricants can help, but it's not just a surface dryness. It's an underlying loss of elasticity ah, that can mm. happen. Yes, it's, this is what a lot of women don't realize. It, it sounds like it might be very age-related. It definitely can be. A lot of situations that women go through, uh, such as childbirth, fertility treatment, anything that really changes the hormones, especially sure. if it de decreases sure. the overall hormone levels, that is what can lead to these problems with these tissues. It can lead to urine leakage for some women. Uh, but again, and that's also for that reason, the loss of elasticity in the smooth muscle and in the lining of both the base of the bladder and the vagina so that they can, women can end up with a, quite a bit of discomfort with sex. Hmm. So would the primary, if uh, a, a woman... Uh, uh, feeling discomfort or, or uh, more than just discomfort with uh, uh, sex, uh, would their primary go-to be the gynecologist? Usually, usually. A lot of women, a lot of my patients are able to, they have good primary care doctors who do their PAPs and who do their gynecologic care. Uh, but most women still like to have a gynecologist that they can go see who can help with these issues, especially if the pain, so the pain could be on the outside, it could be vaginal, it could also be deep inside. And so there's a lot of things that a gynecologist mm. would probably be best qualified to rule out, to do the full exam, make sure that there's nothing going on inside, uterine fibroids, prolapse of the right. organs, uh, that does not always, it's, it's not required that a woman has had vaginal childbirth. It's still possible to have prolapse of the internal organs, the bladder, sometimes the bowel, sometimes the uterus. Then the gynecologist is going to be able to diagnose that and mm. maybe even refer to a gyn specialist. Mm. Mm. Uh, you know, you mentioned uh, blood flow and uh, to the to the muscles and the tissues. Um, yes. It seems to me that 
it's not directly related, but it seems to me very similar to male uh, issues with uh, erections and things like that for blood flow. It's all our that's right. Our general health and the ability right. to uh, for our blood to get to where it needs to go is is really a common denominator mm -hmm. there. That's right. That's right. And you're making me think of the psychological component as well. Uh, women lubricate when there has been enough time to lead up to sexual activity, uh, enough foreplay, enough of the rest of the environment that needs to be in place mm -hmm. for women to feel safe and uh, aroused to be able to have sex. Also, there can be infections, and this is also where men can experience pain with sex. So in men, it's more common, for example, in uncircumcised men, they're more prone to infection. Uh, and in that scenario, they're going to have the warm, moist environment under the foreskin yeah. that women have in the vagina that is can lead to being more prone to harboring uh, STDs or even yeast infection. So that is that is possible. Sure. Also in men, in men they can have inflammation of the prostate that can lead to pain with sex. Also, there can be uh, painful testicular swelling. Sometimes men can experience that. So that is, those are scenarios that definitely can happen for men. Well, I always like to remind when I'm speaking with patients that for women, what we talked about, that loss of elasticity, the loss of the blood flow to the, to the vagina can be treated quite easily with local very tiny microgram doses of estrogen. It's not even enough to help with hot flashes or any other symptom. Uh, I even have patients who've had breast cancer and then usually after a few years and they're in the clear, their team allows them to use vaginal estrogen because it does not get into the system and it's, it's essentially does not cause any systemic risks but can be extremely helpful for these kinds of issues. Hmm. Well, that's all good information. So again, and, and another, again. One of the, another one of these uh, uh, not often spoken about issues in general right. conversation, yeah. but uh, right. if, you, if uh, you're experiencing or you know somebody's experiencing uh, pain, they don't have to live with it, okay? Because in most that's cases, right. go see a specialist, go see a doctor right. and, and get it looked at because it's probably something that could be addressed. Yeah. And I would recommend yes. talk about it with your partner, with your spouse. Mm. Yes. Know, don't keep it a secret. That's right. Dr. Liz, thank you again so much. Really good information, important, and not often talked about. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.